This is my Jarbroil Commander Grill and today I'm going to go over it a little bit because there's not a lot of information out there about these on YouTube or any social media hardly. So I thought I'd go over it and give you some experience with it, what I've come across, issues I've had. This is the exhaust port daisy wheel and it's numbered one through five just for some sort of reference for consistent cooking and this is the intake port and it's numbered the same way I have gone through since I've had this one and put the metal pipe on there whenever it comes from the factory that exhaust tube is plastic and uh, it was just a design flaw from the beginning and a lot of people had trouble with them melting so if you own one of these you can call Charbroil and they will send you a brand new metal piece free of charge I called them one day and it arrived here FedEx on a Saturday and there was no charge to me whatsoever and I thought that was rather outstanding So the first thing we'll do is open up the grill and this is an adjustable rack. You can flip this around. It's got a long groove right here and it goes further down in there or it's got a shallow groove here and it stays up at the top. So we'll set that to the side. And you got this hook that comes with it. And this portion here, this hole is so you can add more fuel to it if and when you need to. This is your drip pan. And it has a rack here that the drip pan sits on. Now then, this is your grate for your charcoal, and this is your removable ash pan. You can just take this and dump it whenever you're done cooking. Now the instruction manual says you're only supposed to put enough charcoal in here to put about this much in there, you know, TP it up good on that just use that for your measurement but what I've done since I like to smoke and I don't like the idea of trying to get back in there I will fill it up like this this is charcoal that I used last time and had left over this thing burns so efficiently that it has charcoal left over so when it does I just take and shake it out and make all the excess ashes fall down in the bottom and save the charcoal and start over again use it next time then I use these tumbleweeds to start my fire tumbleweeds are excellent you don't you know in a pit like this it burns so efficiently you don't need a great big charcoal chimney full of blazing charcoal if you're just gonna smoke Okay, so you 
like this. Let that get started good. Once that gets started, lay you some charcoal over the top of it. And let it get going. And then you wait. Let that get going and let and then you wait for a little bit and then I'll show you how to get it going. What was bad about this is there's so little information on the internet or in the book that comes with it. I actually had to watch people start their regular ceramic kamados and get some information from that. And just like things I've done at work in the past, I'll show somebody how to do something and then what they do for do with it from there, make it their own, it's completely up to you. I'm showing you what works for me. Now then, once this gets started good and those coals turn white, I'll show you what to do whenever we come back. Now then, I've got this oak that I use in my stick burner. So I'm going to lay that right there. Nestle that down in there good. And then I'll take my this, uh, this ring and that drip pan. See that drip pan doesn't fit in there real good, but as it gets hot and the ash builds up, I think the weight of it will settle it down. And what you want to do is open up this intake all the way, shut the lid, open up this exhaust all the way, and you wait. What you're waiting on is that temperature to build up. Once that temperature builds up, it'll go pretty quick. And what you're looking for is for, I want to cook around 275 to 300. 250, 275 usually. 300 is my top. <clears throat> but once that temperature gauge gets a hundred degrees from where I want to be I'll start choking those vents off and I'll come back to you when I get to that point all right we're just above 200 degrees so we want to start choking it off and I'm gonna move it to where it's about one and three quarter they're about on the exhaust and about the same on the intake maybe even a little closer to one and a half yeah about one and a half we'll try that all right now we'll go inside and get the ribs ready what we have here is Smithville extra tender ribs and they were ten dollars and twenty three cents that's a pretty good deal I do believe so I'm going to take these out get the silver skin off of them wash them up and bring them back for seasoning what I'm using on here today is Weber dry rub original flavor I've used this in the past see how much of it I've got left I really love the way this stuff tastes on my meat sprinkle it on there kind of liberally this stuff was oh it was right at three dollars a 
three dollars a container so you know we're trying to save money but there's nothing wrong with trying to save money and have good food all at the same time and this stuff really produces good flavored meat Try to get all the exposed area you can. Like, like I said, I'm not trying to tell people how to do it. I'm trying to show people how I do it. It works for me. And I ain't trying to pay $13 for a bottle of rub can of spice I'm just not going to do it so I'm going to go out and check the temperature on the grill I'm going to let these rest about five minutes before I put them on and then I'll get back with you Oh, don't that look good? Ooh, I guarantee. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. And this thing is steadily holding about 275. So now, I'm going to put these beautiful ribs on. Now then, as with all this style grill, when you unbuckle it, don't just open the lid up. You want to pull it up about an inch, that's marrying, and shut it back down, and open it up again. That's called burping it. If you try to open the lid up too much, too fast, to begin with, it'll do what's called a back flash flashback something and it will there's a movie about it Ooh, that thunder something else there we go and then it will what is it flashback back flash anyway it'll let too much oxygen in there at one time and it will flare up and possibly burn your arm. Now while I was in the house a while ago I found my temperature probes and I'm just gonna test this thing to see I don't have that stand I don't know where that's at but I want to see how long I mean if it has any kind of serious fluctuation in the temperature and when I get done cooking I may just leave it on there to see how long 250 degrees worth of charcoal will last I'm kind of curious because this is a grill that cost $299 when other grills in the same style would start out around $800. So I cannot compare it to a Kamada Joe, a Big Green Egg, uh, any of those other eggs I don't know this is the only one I've ever owned this is the first one of this style I've ever owned what I like or what I know of it so far I really enjoy it holds this temperature here without any issue gives you a nice smoky flavor the only thing I have not done on it yet is grilled a steak but that's coming all right while the ribs are cooking I'm gonna make my top secret glaze. Got very hard ingredients to locate. First off, I'm gonna start off with some original Sweet Baby Rage. Can't find this everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna need about two thirds of a cup.
Okay. That rain is really coming down after. Okay. Now then, this next part is one of those things you add to it to your own flavor. I'm going to tell you like it ain't for everybody. This stuff right here, Dave's Gourmet Ghost Pepper Hot Sauce. They're not playing. I showed you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. A little dab will do you. Mix that up just right. Alright, so my temperature did drop a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and open this thing up. I got my foil and everything sitting there. I'm going to open it up, take these ribs out, burp it, wrap them up. Oh, look at that. Man, those look good. Alright, let me get these things wrapped up right quick and I'll get right back to you. I'm gonna stick this second probe in this thing to see if they read the similar. But I'm thinking one of them's bad. But I'm gonna open up these vents just a little bit. Since the temperature went down quite a bit, I'm gonna open up this vent to a two. And I'm gonna open this one up to a two. And we're gonna watch and see what happens. Why is that thing reading Celsius? There. All right. Got that all straightened out. Got that straightened out. All right. We will see you in two hours because we're doing this with the three, two, one method. If I hadn't said that, uh, for those of y'all that don't know it's three hours on the grill then two hours wrap and then one hour naked again so now I've got to set it on here for two hours and I'll get back with you all right back out here two hours later Let's check these ribs and unwrap them
Oh, those are tender. Falling apart already. show in there looking pretty good now we'll let them cook for another hour or so we'll see how it goes come back and we'll glaze them temperature was holding after I opened them or closed. I wound up opening them up and then I came back out and closed them up some more and it was holding at 300 pretty much the whole time. So we'll check back in another hour. Okay, been an hour. I open it up. Goodness, those look good. Put some barbecue sauce on them. It is 47 degrees here today in East Texas. And this thing has held temperature with an acceptable, to an acceptable degree as far as I'm concerned, all day long. Oh man, that looks good. Okay. What do you think? About 15 more minutes. I give her 15. And then we'll come back. Take them off and we'll cut them up. Okay. It's been 15 minutes. Gonna pull these things off. Shut her down. Now let's see if I can pull these off without without them breaking. Oh yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Shut these grills down. What you have to do, buckle it back up, shut that one completely off, shut the intake completely off, and it'll stuff out that fire. And sometime tomorrow, I can come out here and shuffle the coal around in the bottom of it and start all over again using the same charcoal. I'm going to let these rest for a little while. And I'm going to take them inside and then we'll cut them up. Alright, I've got them in here. I've let them rest for a little while. See if we can flip these over and get them cut up. So I can show them off.
falling apart, ain't gonna act right. show you. Look at how this bones just slides right out of that. He's got a pretty decent smoke ring there. It's got a nice look to it. But what it eat? Hmm. Hell yeah, dude. Damn. Yep. Maybe maybe that bite wasn't good enough. Let's, let's try it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's, that's really, really dang good. Okay. So, so yeah, I think we're gonna wrap this video up right here, mm -hmm. and um, y'all stay tuned. I'll do it again real soon. Next time, maybe we can cook a steak. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Uh, be sure. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe if you like what you see. I hope I've helped some of y'all out, kind of open your eyes to what this grill can do. Uh, like I said, it's 43 degrees here today, and it held temperature pretty dang good all day long. All right, see y'all next time. Peace, good karma, end of line.